everyone. Uh, as Graham said, I'm uh, Francesca Ayres, and I'm in the product team at Mendeley. Um, and uh, I, we're really excited to be sponsoring this event. I mean, I um, am actually, have actually been blown away by the quality of the talks so far. It's been really, really, really interesting. Uh, I started in, um, out in the publishing industry a, a number of years ago and, uh, and came back to Mendeley because I, I wanted to kind of be part of the, of the change of the digital revolution could bring to, to scientific publishing and academic publishing. And uh, to see all of the stuff that's going on uh, today is, is, is just fascinating. And it, and it feels like there's been a real, a real change in this industry. So that's, that's just great from a personal perspective, not from a Mendeley perspective as well. Um, so I, I kind of wanted to get a feel. Does anyone use Mendeley as a, as a citation manager? Hi, guys. <laughs> grab, make sure you grab a t-shirt and stuff um, from the uh, slide down outside. But everyone should do that anyway. Um, but I, yeah, so I didn't want to uh, kind of dwell too much on the history of Mendeley. But it was started off in 2008. So that was actually, it predates Twitter. It's really, really old. Um, and it was, it was formed to kind of ease the lives of researchers, firstly as a citation management tool, as, as I'm sure a number of you are aware, and then secondly as a kind of uh, a collaboration tool. I'm going to use the word collaboration because it's just a bit of a personal beef of mine, but I hate the word social network. Nobody, I don't think anyone wants another social network. It's just my personal view. It's uh, not that of Mendeley necessarily, but uh, yeah, absolutely a, a collaboration tool. Um, and I'm sure all of you are probably already know, but uh, two years ago we were acquired by Elsevier and, uh, and obviously it have then strong links to other Elsevier products such as Scopus and Science Direct. And I'm going to um, tell you a bit about how we're kind of using those as well. Um, so really, uh, from, from a Mendeley perspective, I think what we can add to this, this discussion, if you like, is about how we're, we're starting to link up the users of, of, of Mendeley um, and how they're using Mendeley, so their readership stats, the citation stats, um, and also how we're making this, this data, level, data layer um, that, uh, that is about their, their usage um, available to other applications, how, how we've got an open API that actually uses that data to kind of um, twist and turn it in different ways. Um, so Mendeley's now got around uh, 4 million users. It's still growing rapidly. Um, yeah, we've got a really great kind of support network, active on Twitter, et cetera, et cetera. Um, and one of the things I wanted to kind of highlight was about how we're using uh, research, uh, readership st statistics. So um, we've got data within Mendeley that shows that actually readership stats of articles in Mendeley um, correspond to future citations of the article. And that's where it becomes relevant that we've been around since longer than Twitter, because you can kind of see that historical view of going from Mendeley has this many readers, readers of this paper, and then in the future it gets cited this many times. So that's quite exciting. And uh, then there's a, a, a kind of recent paper that I found that was uh, about PLOS One. Um, and it basically linked Mendeley network activity, showed a kind of really strong correlation to how much people tweet about uh, that article. So we're kind of seeing links then between activity on other social networks and people, uh, and then people talking about things within Mendeley, within our groups, um, discussing things and collaborating within our groups, and the data on, uh, on the readership of that article all kind of being linked together, and then in the, in the end, being linked to citations. So it's kind of nice to see all of those bits of data showing quite clear correlations across, uh, across time. So that's really exciting for us, and it means that we've kind of got a lot of opportunity to kind of help, help kind of shape how, uh, you know, altmetrics might look in the future. Um, and I kind of wanted to kind of touch on that social media point again. We, um, Elsevier recently acquired a company called Newsflow. I don't know whether any of you have heard of Newsflow. They, again, aggregate med social media mentions, so Twitter mentions, Facebook mentions of institutions and people and articles. And that data then adds to the kind of overall um, data ecosystem, if you like, of both Elsevier and Mendeley and kind of gives us a, a, a kind of better picture and that we can link these, these data, this data together. Um, I'm just going to move on my slides a bit. Um, so that was just to show, uh, so there's an article on Mendeley, we've got readership stats at the side there, they're available whether you're logged in, logged out, you can always see it for pretty much any article on Mendeley, um, go and have a look. And we've got really great groups actually around um, altmetrics and, uh, and um, other kind of scientific impact where people share papers and discuss papers. So I would urge you to check it out if you haven't already uh, signed up to Mendeley and have a look. And then I wanted to talk just a little bit about our API. Um, so at the moment, um, so we've got a couple, so a bit of a shout out to Altmetric, who I know are here, hello. <laughs> um, 
so yeah, so a load of apps have been have already been created with the Mendeley API, and um, and that's a growing community of developers who are um, developing on top of our our data layer, and we're we're constantly refining the API and looking to make it more um, more kind of exposing more of our data to um, to these applications, not just about kind of delivery of PDFs or citations, but but to kind of open it out so it's wider and that it has these kind of impact factor and uh, and citation level. Um, uh, information. So that's so that's quite quite exciting. Something that we're quite excited about doing. Um, and uh, then there was a couple of other things that I kind of wanted to mention. That I think I think were quite relevant in this space. Um, one was actually about us. <coughs> Elsevier um, recently changed their data text mining policies to allow. Um, Download, mass downloads of articles uh, uh, and then for researchers to do uh, projects on top of those articles that kind of mine that data and, uh, and kind of present results and findings about that. So that's a really exciting, that change in January and that's a really exciting step forward and, and kind of shows, I guess, how Mendeley are helping Elsevier kind of change and shape their, their growth in the direction of open access and, and, and providing more information to researchers um, about uh, content. Um, and the final thing was about the um, Crossref DOI event tracker, which Mendeley and Elsevier are, are both part of, um, and is basically going to of, uh, the research objects that are kind of talked about within Mendeley and uh, and searched for on Science Direct and, and cited between in Scopus, um, <coughs> tracking those objects and how they're used across social networks. And we're really heavily involved in that and and looking to kind of come become more involved in the future. And, and hopefully that will kind of create a, a level playing field across other scientific collaboration networks as well as Mendeley to give um, a kind of overall picture of the scientific uh, landscape or research landscape, if you will. Um, and then. Uh, oh, that was, that was the vet project. And uh, then just to say thank you again for, for inviting us along to this, uh, this conference and a uh, little plug. We released our Android app this week. We're very excited about it. So if you are a Mendeley and an Android user, please, uh, please download it and have a look. It's, uh, it's very good. Thank you. Oh, um, sorry. Oh, <laughs> I was getting a little uh, plug from my colleagues in the corner. And we're actually at the hack day tomorrow. So, uh, so with our API. So, if anybody wants, we've got three Mandalay uh, employees to kind of come along and help you out if you'd like to get involved with looking and using our API to kind of look at our data as well. Awesome. Thank you. <laughs> Any questions at all for your team? Yeah. Um, well, first of all, um, I was first introduced to Mendeley because I was so tired of, you know, really old and clunky software like in over Netflix. So yeah. I really do appreciate the work that you guys have done to make it such a great piece of software. Oh, thank you. So, <laughs> now, um, I guess my two questions are um, that, um, you know, with all the great stuff you're doing, Mendeley yeah. was so recently bought by Osovia. And um, how do you think that has, you know, if or well, if that has affected any of your operations, whether they have some sort of influence on what you do, and has that changed, you know, your direction in any way? Because uh, that publisher is, um, you know, infamously known for its very restrictive licensing, and you know, um, uh, as a big open. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Sorry, as a big opponent of open access, so yeah. I don't know what your stand is on that. And I guess my second. My second question is, um, with Man Mandalay being so great, um, you know, when will you make it even more competitive by making it fully open source like Zotero? Thank you. Um, so in answer to your first question about, about the open access, I mean, Mendeley and, and I am, am uh, are very pro-open access, and, and we always have been. And as you say, the, uh, the acquisition uh, obviously meant that I think we're in a unique position to, to help Elsevier realize the benefits of open access. I, I think, um, it, you know, it's, it's, it's going to be a transition from obviously um, the business model that Elsevier has now to, to a future one, and, and I think Mendeley are a really key part of that. And so actually I see us as, as leading them on a journey rather than the other way around. Um, and in answer to your question, second question about the uh, open source uh, code, I... Um, I don't actually know is the answer. Um, obviously, um, we are keen to make as much of our, co our code and code base and uh, applications as open source as possible. Um, 
I think that it will take some time to get there, and it's not something that we're focusing on doing at the moment as a, as a high priority, but um, in the future, potentially, yes. Thank you.